Uh, yes, yeah, so, so I want to talk to you about a kind of a first world problem. When you make your blockchain uh, too good, and there you see that there are some, some problems that arise when your blockchain is too efficient and how to, to make an appropriate gas model for that. So this is kind of my uh, alternate title here. So like uh, my blockchain is too efficient and it makes my miners sad. So how can I make them happy again? Uh, right, so uh, I'll first uh, I want to talk a bit about uh, the principles of, of gas first since I, uh, uh, I don't talk about the gas model. So, so what is gas? So, so gas is just a, a, like a unit of computational effort in the blockchain, right? So every, every transaction on the blockchain consumes a certain amount of gas, which means like how much effort does it takes all the nodes of the, uh, of the network to confirm that transaction, right? And uh, the idea is that, so gas is a scarce and precious resource, right? Like there's only a finite amount of gas that can be processed by, by everyone in the network. Right? And uh, so there, there is an optimal block size in terms of uh, amount of gas that should be used per block, which is like the amount that can be consistently processed by the whole network uh, uh, consistently every block, right? So, uh, so, so that's kind of an engineering constraint that okay, so this is how much we can process. So this is the final supp finite supply there is of gas. So we should sell this gas, like this space on the blockchain uh, appropriately to the most valuable transactions only. Right? So kind of uh, uh, to get on the blockchain, you have to pay proportionally to the amount of gas you're consuming on the blockchain. And this gas should be sold. That's what is called a market clearing price, which is basically the price that only the most valuable transactions can pay, right? And, uh, uh, right. Uh, so what I, what I want you to think about uh, what we'll be considering in this uh, talk is like, what if we, uh, our engineering got so good that now we have an infinite capacity blockchain where we can fit everything we want on it because like our engineers are awesome or something. So now we have a blockchain where we can fit anything, right? Uh, uh, right. So, so yeah. So, kind of to think about how would gas would work in this scenario. Uh, right. So, uh, first, uh, uh, before going there, so I want to talk about uh, uh, this. So, okay. So, so we say, okay, gas should be sold at this market clearing price. This is what users of the blockchain should pay for gas. But then there's a question of how do we reach this price? Okay. So, how do how do users find out what's the appropriate price that they should pay for gas? So, so there's kind of two main ways to do this. There's the original like Bitcoin model, which is like the first price auction, uh, which basically means that uh, every every gas user just makes a guess about what they think the market clearing price is, and the highest guesses get to be on chain. Right? So this kind of tends to be very volatile and inaccurate. In the involves a lot of guesswork so it's like i think this is the amount of demand right now so let me make this bid and so it's kind of subjective and so, so the problem there is like uh, right so there's a lot of uh, volatility involved in, the, in all this guesswork so so what falcon uses and actually was proposed for, uh, first for uh, ethereum blockchain in this uh, kind of uh, uh, ethereum proposal eip 1559 is the uh, so, so it's this 1559 approach where, where the idea is that how gas fees work is that you have, so what you pay for gas is a base fee plus a minor tip where the idea is so this base fee is something that uh, that is a fixed amount uh, i mean that that everyone can see what the amount is so they know what to pay for it um, and this base fee uh, is evolves algorithmically based on the demand on the network so kind of it eliminates this guesswork right so you can see what is the base fee and you pay it. And then on top of that, you can pay a minor tip that, uh, so, so the idea is that this base fee will be just burned. It will not go to the miner as in the Bitcoin model where all the payment goes to the miner. And only this, this tip amount is what, what the miner will, will earn. Yeah. And then, so there's some algorithm involved here to kind of decide what the base fee is. But the point is, it's not up to guesswork anymore to try to figure out what the bit is like, uh, uh, it comes from the demand and you have at this value you can look at. Right? And there's a portion that is burned and a portion that goes to the mine. Uh, so, uh, so 
Then, uh, so there's, there's two mechanisms I, I, I discussed. So there's the first price option mechanism of Bitcoin and the EIP-1559 mechanism of Ethereum and Falcoin. Uh, so, so they are not what determine what the price uh, uh, of gas should be. Right? So, so like, it's not like introducing this sort of mechanism will lower gas fees. It will just make it uh, personally uh, less volatile and easier to use and so on. But price, the, the price of gas strictly comes just from supply of demand uh, and demand. Right? So there's, there's a, so what I have here, so you have your block size, which I called here B. And this is the size of the mempool, right? So there's a number of messages out there that want to get in on the chain, but only an amount B of them can get in. And so if you have a change in like the fraction of the messages that can get in, then this market price will change. So it's basically like how many messages of the ones that want to get in can actually fit in the blockchain. And that is what sets the, the uh, kind of the, this market price. Uh, all right. So, uh, so I want to talk also a bit about like uh, so when do these transactions get on the chain, right? So, so like a uh, user wants to make a transaction, it will get on the chain when both the miner and the users are happy about it, right? So, so I uh, so, but for that reason, the way to think about it is in this kind of like what is the utility to the miner of including your your transaction on the chain. And kind of what is the utility of the for the user of having that their transaction get on the chain? Right? Uh, so this uh, there's a nice more thorough analysis uh, in this paper by Tim of Garden. So this is kind of a very simplified version of it. Uh, so this is kind of what this utility looks like in this kind of Bitcoin first price option model where. Basically, okay. So this is the utility of the miner, which is minting the block. Like, how much will they will they gain from putting all these transactions in the block? So basically, there's a contribution from so you're summing over all the transactions t that go on the block, and so these are the transactions that form part of the block that is being minted, and the transactions that get on the block are a subset actually of the larger meme pool of of transactions that are there that want to get on the on the block. So this is how so, and every transaction there spends an amount of gas uh, G for that transaction. This is the amount of gas that transaction consumed. And this is the amount, uh, this is the payment, uh, what, the, what the user paid to get that, that transaction in there. And, so, uh, and in, the, in the Bitcoin kind of case, this payment just goes to the miners. So this is like a positive contribution here. So this is the price they paid for the unit of gas. And um, this, uh, this negative term here is just the uh, operational operating costs to the miner of including your transaction. Right? So, so the miner needs to spend a certain amount of effort to just include those, those transactions. Like they would rather just submit an empty block because it's easier. So it costs them um, an amount of, of effort uh, mu, right? So as long as they pay a larger amount than this minimal effort that the miner is making, then the miner is happy. Uh, because they get a, a positive uh, uh, so, so they just need to overcome the operating costs of the of the miner and for the user it's just so so they want to send this transaction and the user has this kind of uh, value that they attach to this transaction so this is like how much it means to the uh, how much the, does the user value that this transaction gets through and as long as the, the value that they place on having that transaction on chain is greater than what they had to pay for it, then they will pay for it. And so this is the idea. So if these utilities are both positive, then transactions happen and everyone is happy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, so this is what these utility functions look like for EIP-1559. And you see things start getting a bit more weird and complicated. So. The difference here is only for the miner that, uh, so, uh, so you have what the client pays, what the user pays and what the, what the operating costs for the miner are. But now there's also this base fee that will not go to the miner, but it will just get burned, right? So this R here represents the, the, the base fee. Um, so, so, so the idea is here that, so the optimal client for, a, for the, what, a, what a, the optimal strategy for a user that wants to get into the chain 
is they should pay an amount for their gas that kind of barely covers these two. Right? So as long as they pay for the bare fee, uh, the base fee, and they just barely pay for the operating cost, then that's that's good enough to get in there. Uh, but right, so the idea is that this base fee kind of eats away most of the potential what would have been profits to the miner, right? So the idea is that this utility it always stays kind of near zero, while the user utility doesn't really change under the IP fifteen fifty nine. So this is kind of a, a, a kind of a weird point here. Okay, so so miners derive zero utility from including all your messages on the chain. Why would they bother? Why don't they just submit a bunch of empty blocks? Uh, why, why would they bother submitting any messages at all? And so one question is like, does the IP 59 just take away all the happiness from the miners? And and uh, so, so so yeah, the, the details. So there's so the point is there should be actually like an extra term here. So so this is not the end of the story. And what is missing in this utility for the miner is that it's basically this principle that okay, so so fees are getting burned. And fee burning is supposed to make everyone, every token holder of the network happy if someone else burns some fees, right? So that makes your own tokens more valuable. So, so fee burning should make everyone happy and miners are a subset of everyone. So therefore fee burning should also make uh, miners happy in some amount. And this is the kind of the term that we need to add here to describe that, right? So, uh, so this part, this whole part basically stays around zero. This doesn't contribute much, but there's an added utility. So they want to include messages on the chain because that will get gas burned and that will increase the value of the tokens that they have. So here we have, so this is kind of the wealth, the amount of tokens that the, the miner is holding. And this is the, the block reward that they are earning and having users burn their fees will increase the value of their wealth and their income of block reward. So basically, so, so here we have the difference between like what their wealth would be worth if nothing was burned versus what is worth now that this amount of, of, uh, of fees were burned. Right? So, where, so this is kind of the, this is the circulating supply, like how many tokens there are on the network and uh, there used to be S amount of tokens in the network, and now there's this amount less. So, like reducing this amount increases the the, the value of, of of what I have. So, so there is still a benefit to miners from burning these tokens. So, the idea is that they still want to include your transactions on the chain because it makes them happy and it also makes everyone happy. But they are a subset of everyone, so they should be happy. Uh, 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 so the point is here, so in either mechanism, like, so you have first price options, so you have ERP-1559, and these are the different utility functions. What miners want to do all the time is like, they just want to maximize their happiness, right? They want to maximize their utility. So these two functions, they want to maximize it. And both of these are maximized by having a more pain, right? So like higher, uh, so, so uh, yeah, so, if right, so more amount gets paid. So they are both maximized by maximizing the same thing. So like, uh, like how much was paid, uh, so, so like how much gas was consumed and the times what uh, price that gas was sold for, right? So it's kind of like the total uh, network revenue for that block. So, so in both cases, miners want to maximize for the same thing, right? Uh, now, uh, in in our current state, uh, max, uh, miners want to maximize for this thing, but it's not up to them. They don't get to maximize for this thing because uh, uh, so uh, this is outside of their control. Right? So this what what gets burned, like they can't decide that. Right? But uh, enter. So here is where we start getting interesting issues. So let's say like we have awesome engineers that solve the problem of scalability on the blockchain now, like the blockchain is so efficient that we can include all the transactions in there that we want. So all of the mean pool of messages, they can be included in every block all the time. There's no engineering issues about that. 
Now, the problem with that is, uh, okay, so if all the, I say, if all the transactions that want to get in can get in without any competition, that will basically like drive the base fee to zero, absolutely there. And then like the client just needs to barely cover the operating costs and nothing on top of that. So an infinite blockchain will in both cases reduce the utility to the miners to zero. So they're like, why would I bother doing it? So there's nothing in first. Okay, so now I can include all the messages out there, but they gain nothing by doing that, right? When they were doing so, if you take their finite blockchain right now where they're gaining some utility and you give them an awesome engineering wise blockchain where they can include anything, miners will complain because like, oh, my profit went away. Right? So, uh, so the idea is that infinite blockchain that is perfectly efficient takes away all the happiness from miners. Right? So this is kind of the, the paradox here. So uh, this is, uh, uh, so in a first price option world, this kind of wouldn't be a real issue in the sense that, uh, okay, so so the miners in a Bitcoin world would just not really include all the transactions. They would just include a subset of the transactions that they will decide. So they will set an effective block size. So, so they'll say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll allow in only this amount of gas. And the amount of gas that they will allow in will be the one that maximizes the profit. And so like the price of, uh, so, so now this artificially introduces some competition to pay, to, to get in the blockchain. So this will give some non-zero price for the gas, right? And uh, so they will, so this is kind of the, the, the amount of profit that they will make and they will choose the, the effective block size that will maximize the profit. So even if they have the capacity to, to, to include all the messages, if, if the miners are allowed to, they will not include all of them and they will include the amount that will maximize the profit. Uh, now, there's an issue with this with in an EIP 1559 uh, world, which is that the block size is not up to the miners. So this is part of this uh, base fee updating formula. So, so this, so, so how it works is that, uh, right, so this is your base fee at the previous block and there's this formula that will tell you whether the base fee will decrease or in, uh, or increase, and this is based on a target block size. Right? So it's like uh, did more, was more gas burned than the target, then make the fee more expensive, and it's less was burned than the target, let make it less expensive. But this is built into EIP fifty fifty nine, and right now this is set as this like the maximum we can uh, what we can really. Uh, 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 efficiently processed so consistently right so so in the so if we make the blockchain infinite we need a way to to not put infinity here because that will just drive uh uh base fee to zero so kind of this could be fixed in a more convoluted way in like making this kind of two-step eip 50 59 where the the ideal block size is the, the target block size is updated also in a way that maximizes the utility to the miners. And so, so something like this would be the idea. So what you would need, something that fixes a, a, an optimal block size if you can include everything. Uh, now, uh, uh, so this would be the case. Uh, so this is how you would do it if you're running, uh, if you have like infinite blockchain Ethereum, okay, maximize the burn. Uh, but Falcon has kind of unique problems in which uh, and the, the thing is that proving storage, which is what uh, the miners need to do, is actually very, very gas costly. So, so this is a plot here of the gas usage in Falcon by different kind of, of, of uses of gas. And all of these first uses here until others, these are all uh, storage provider related. So this is the gas that they spend proving their storage. So it takes a lot of gas and the rest of the users are just these others, which you can barely make out here. So most of the gas is being consumed by, by the storage providers, which brings us like more conflict. Of, okay, so if other people were paying for this gas then they want the gas to be expensive, but now they are paying for their own gas, so it makes things more complicated. That's okay, uh, Axel, just a quick yeah. time, time check. We've got about two minutes left. Yeah, all right, okay. Yeah, 
uh, so this this kind of, uh, of 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 problem here kind of means that like first price option wouldn't be a good option for Falcon. That's kind of a reason why it doesn't work there because it will just means like lead to off chain agreement where the storage providers sort of lower the gas fees for each other while leaving expensive gas fees for the rest of the users. So this is kind of why like EIP fifteen fifty nine is kind of more fair for Falcon and that keeps the uh, same gas fees for everyone. But in this case, uh, so, so we need to yet again modify what is the utility function to this uh, 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 Falcon uh, uh, storage providers. So what we added here now is like this negative term, which is the rate at which they need to burn uh, gas to prove their own storage, right? So, so they are gaining utility by other people burning gas, but they're losing utility by themselves having to, to burn gas. Right? So, and kind of, so now miners want to maximize their utility and it's kind of a different utility for every miner. They have their own wealth and their own burn rate and their own uh, revenue. Uh, so, so, so it's a harder question. So how do I, what, uh, so, so how do I choose the target block size that makes most people happy? So then there's different options you can look. So this is an open question where I wanna, Kind of leave it near here where like uh, okay so maybe we want to optimize the utility for the median storage provider that has a median amount of wealth and even amount of burn and so on so, so kind of they want uh, more gas to be burned but they want the base fee to be cheap so they don't have to spend that much so it's like a more complicated type of balance and yeah and um, yeah, the last thing is that the situation should improve for miners once FPM comes online in the, in the sense that FPM will bring about like a lot more other kinds of gas usage that will mean that other users will be spending more gas, not only the, the storage providers, which means that, uh, yeah, will make it easier for, guidance, uh, for, for the storage providers to increase their utility because they will not be the larger the largest consumers of gas anymore. Okay. Uh, yeah, anyway, I, this is some details on the, like how Falcon actually wants to achieve this kind of infinite blockchain with hierarchical consensus, but uh, we can skip those details for now. And uh, uh, right, so yeah, I think that's uh, about the end.